Yoshi P. Someone who really is being, well, made myth. I mean, he's talked about in such a way. The savior of Final Fantasy. A man celebrated for carrying the franchise out of the fire that the PlayStation 3 era left it in. But he's not just Yoshi P, subject of much internet worship. His actual name is Naoki Yoshida, and he's actually pretty humble about it all, which is a damn good sign. And more than anything, he is in fact just a guy. Pretty damn interesting one, actually. We did a little research. We found a lot more than we bargained for. Now, most of what today's video is really coming from is what we learned from the collection of his Famitsu columns uh, called Yoshida Uncensored. So a very big shout out for Shinitan for translating them. Big hero. Let's start by the most pressing question. Is he in fact a primal? Time to examine the evidence. A primal is, in essence, a concept given form through ether. The large enough collection of ether and a solid enough dream, wish, or idea, you can, in fact, give birth to life. Yoshida himself is a man formed of pure MMO love. He has played them religiously for decades. He managed to start even working on one, Dragon Quest X, and then inexplicably ended up leading FF14 to where it is today. Right when the players needed him most, he manifested. It's impossible to think about the plot of A Realm Reborn without thinking about it on a more metatextual level, comparing it to the game's development. Uh, the plot, uh, you know, the, the prison of the Twelve, built with ether, gathered from across the world, it failed its duty, and Bahamut's might was brought to bear. On Eorzea then, all the, the cries for salvation and the prayers for rebirth, they took form, saving the world in the end. The real world, Naoki Yoshida, was just an MMO-loving man, but in order to save FF14, he had to shoulder some of those hopes and dreams, and in a way, become Yoshi P. That's, I think, why the people think the P might stand for primal. That said, the man himself would far rather the P stood for player. He was actually asked about being a primal in the Endwalker Media Tour by Jesse Cox and JP, and the answer was this. I always tell people, you guys are my friends, my comrades, and my family. I don't want you to think of me as a primal. I mean... <laughs> yeah, in a way, hero worship is not exactly something that the plotline of FF14 really supports. And by his own admission, he is in fact just a middle-aged man who really, really loves video games. So, how did all of this stuff end up happening? How did a regular enough guy's absolute love for MMOs lead him on a journey that would have so many look up to him and revere him so much? Going almost 30 years back, we've got this guy to thank, Yasumi Matsuno, specifically for creating this game. Yoshida has said before that Tactics Ogre let us cling together all the way back in 1995. That is the game that inspired him to build his career toward working on a game with Matsuno himself. While it's not an MMO, experiencing the world of Tactics Ogre and later Final Fantasy Tactics very much highlights how the world building of FF14 got its roots. Uh, to put it into words, it's European medieval fantasy focused on the personal impact of political intrigue. There's another game then that inspired Yoshida heavily. It was a few years later and it's one you might recognize was, of course, a groundbreaking entry from a young and promising company called Blizzard Entertainment. It sucked up a lot of young adult Yoshida's time. He tells the story of eagerly awaiting the release of Diablo after seeing it in a magazine, but having to wait a long time, because Blizzard delayed it repeatedly until they were satisfied with it as gamers themselves. He likened them to stubborn old men with too much pride, but it clearly worked because he and his colleagues played it for hours and hours on their internal land, even skipping work to do so. This is in fact where his love and reverence for Blizzard games kicked off. 
He said many times he would love to work with Blizzard someday, and of course, he has in fact been spotted at BlizzCon. He really has been a pretty much a lifelong fan, and he always makes it clear that A Realm Reborn would not exist without World of Warcraft. But Diablo and Blizzard was just a stepping stone. What it really did was start a lifelong affair with the entire genre of online games. Like many of us, he did not just dabble in MMOs. He lived MMOs. In fact, he loves them so much, he confessed to having four separate ISP contracts at once so that he could actually just swap his connections in case one service's routing resulted in packet loss to foreign game servers. Seriously, this guy, he was serious. Four different connections. Of all his MMO exploits though, Dark Age of Camelot was the most vicious. For the six and a half years he played it, he says it was a lifestyle, right down to skipping meals just to play more. Kind of ironically, he started playing Camelot because he got too addicted to EverQuest, and he wanted to play a game that, well, would eat up less of his time. Now, he actually ended up playing Camelot so much that when he met someone from the development team while working on FF14, they actually remembered his Camelot character, right? And that's just from how much PvP he did. That's a lot of PvP. One anecdote from Yoshida Uncensored really, really does stand out. At a very small company he worked for in the past, he was working around 14 hours a day doing the work of multiple roles. His boss, out of pity, according to Yoshida, let him bring his own PC in so that he could research other MMORPGs while he was on the clock. Now, he said it was like a dream. Working away, of course, but being able to swap to his other PC whenever he spotted a rare mob spawn. He'd only have to log out for 30 minutes to make his way home, and then he could get right back to the game. The anecdotes littered throughout his columns show that he's had every experience an MMO vet could have. He met friends from Diablo in Ultima Online, and as their guildmaster, he got viciously scammed. He was trying to sell two weeks worth of mining materials, which was enough to buy a house for the guild, but he fell for a very basic Ultima Online scam. See, in Ultima Online, you had to hover over a pile of gold to see how much gold it was. The pile of gold icon could actually mean anything from six gold to 60,000 or more, just any number greater than six. Now, he did what was right the first time. He confirmed, he hovered over. 64,000 gold, it was there. But then the buyer misclicked the cancel button. So then they tried to do the trade again. But this time, he was so excited to get the money to buy his guild a house that he forgot to check how much gold was in the pile of gold. He got a measly six gold. Thankfully, he vented his frustrations to a Japanese Ultima Online forum, and then the leader from a huge guild reimbursed him and even gave him a set of armor that he treasured for the rest of his Ultima Online time. Then, there was the time he role-played as a female caster in Dark Age of Camelot, kneeling and saying, thanks my knight, to tank players who would cover him in combat. Until one of his regular allies thought he actually was a girl, and it got very awkward very fast. So after accidentally breaking a young man's heart, Yoshida decided to stop role-playing. Surprisingly enough, he claims to still be in touch with most of the people in these stories from his column. And with a variety of experiences like that, I think it's no wonder he loves MMOs so much. But he's not just about MMOs. So who is Yoshi P? It's hard to get a complete picture. As far as we know, of course, he works, he plays FF14, and we really do know that he actually plays a hell of a lot of the game for fun. He does some interesting philosophizing on how to structure work, and how to work when you don't feel like working in column 49, and he uses here a very specific example. He started writing the column just after midnight, 12 hours before the deadline. 
because instead of doing it the day before as he had planned, he actually just went and cleared some Alexander Savage fights instead. And even when writing the column later that night, he was just fighting the urge to log in and do Thordan Extreme. So he really does seem to be the FF14 man then, except when he does things like take days off work to go snowboarding. And that's something he's really invested in. In a few columns, he talks about how he always has his gear ready once the winter rolls around. And this even includes his second car that always has a snowboard rack and always has its snow tires on. He does nothing in half measures, that's very much for sure. He tries to snowboard 10 to 20 times a year, and when he does, he doesn't half-ass it, he does a full day. He's out the door at 5 a.m., and he carves up the slopes until the slopes close. Beyond that, well, he really is all about games and movies. He has a tradition of re-watching the Matrix trilogy every new year, purely because he just really likes them, so I suppose it was awfully nice of America to release the fourth movie this Christmas, just in time for him. The other pillar, then, that seems to comprise his hobbies, is the humble mystery novel. He loved reading them so much in his younger years that he actually believes the mystery novels destroyed his eyesight. The romantic idea of reading a foreign classic mystery novel in a dimly lit room was just too appealing to him, so he read one almost every night when he was in middle school. He said that he likens it to being in a female classmate's room on a school trip. So you know he means business. <laughs> We have a whole video, actually, on his love of mystery novels and what that actually has meant for FF14, so check out that video on the channel for a bit more of that. After How Endwalker is, is clearly written, I think the video also hits a little bit different, too, so maybe we'll have to do a follow-up. Anyway, there's enough to talk about with Yoshida for hours, so we'll end with just one more segment on him as a person. And that is his weaknesses. Some people try to puff up their chest and not let anybody know that they have weaknesses. Maybe they'll even deceive themselves into thinking they don't have weaknesses. That's certainly not him though, because all credit to him, he is in fact very upfront with the things that he, he doesn't like. Things like that. As an example, he's actually terrified of flying. So going abroad is actually a pretty awful experience for him, but it's something he puts up with for obviously business and meeting the players. And this is where his enjoyment of movies actually comes in, because he can just go and watch movies, uh, you know, between work and flights to help get him through it. Another one of his weaknesses that ties into this, as he says, is that now that he's getting a bit older, he says his tear glands are loose. I don't really know if I would consider it to be a weakness. When he watches movies or read books, he ends up feeling he can relate to them on a sort of personal level so much now that he's older that he just cries a lot. And he says in the column that it's gotten so bad that he actually now worries about reading books when he travels in case he embarrasses himself. This even happened to him on a plane. He was watching the movie Creed. Creed, of all things. And the themes of the relationship between Adonis and Rocky left him crying so much that the flight attendant had to check if he was okay. But you know what? It's hardly a surprise given that there's quite a few tearjerkers in FF14. So I don't consider this sort of thing to be a weakness at all. Oh, and also his eyesight is shit. Hey, that's two of us. Ever see him constantly take his glasses on and off? Well, Apparently, his eyesight has diminished horribly because, of course, of age, uh, work, and how much he reads. Um, but also, for him, the nature of contact lenses and LASIK just scares him too much to even try. To be honest, I'm the exact same. I know laser eye surgery could be great, but I don't really like the idea of the front of my eye being sliced open and there being a little eye flap. I totally get it. It's a pretty spooky thing. He doesn't even like wearing glasses because, he says... They make him look too serious. Now, we sort of think he comes from a bit of an era where, you know, glasses were kind of like for the nerds in school, and that's maybe something that stuck with him a bit. A bit more related to his job, uh, you might not notice this from watching him lately, but actually, he suffers horribly from stage fright. 
For a long time, taking the stage to present his game was a terrifying ordeal, stemming from a bad experience that he had presenting at school. For two examples, giving a talk to students in Mexico and addressing the crowd at the Orsian Symphia, every time he is trembling with fear until something reminds him that he's just speaking to a crowd of people who are just like him. In Mexico, it was a woman hugging him excitedly. And at the symphony, it was one guy yelling his name and the entire crowd joining in. He firmly believes that FF14 players are the real warriors of light and share with him the echo whenever he needs it most. It's a nice little, uh, nice little analogy for that feeling and how, well, how it can just propel somebody and help them get over their stuff. And really, that's about it for as much as we can fit into this video. There's a lot of Yoshida Uncensored. He has a very interesting history. And it's kind of nice to know more about the man. And if you enjoyed this, we will make some more because while we talked a bit more about the man himself, he's also a businessman. He's also an experienced director, an experienced producer, and actually a pretty deep thinker. On top of that, there are a ton of insights about FF14's various struggles and general game development hell. We could do a deep look into, into the past work. So if anything there sounds appealing, be it the history of Yoshi P, what we can learn from Yoshi P, let us know, we'll get right to it. Till then though, I hope you found this to be interesting. I hope we're able to help humanize the man himself. And I'll see you next time.